at the planning stage still. Uh, this time we're going to have a look at the upstairs lights for uh, Alice's project. So, where do we put lights? Now lights is, um, there's no prescribed formula for how much lights you need, like there is soft sockets in the IET guidance. Obviously the room needs to be bright enough for what you're using it for. So a bedroom needs to be less bright than say a living room or a kitchen. You know, a kitchen's obviously going to be the brightest space in the house. Um, and a bedroom is probably going to be the dimmest space in the house. So where do you put the lights and how many lights do you need? So we've got a floor plan. It's pretty much the scale for the house. Uh, as mentioned on previous videos is just look up similar houses to yours in the local area that's for sale and chances are I've got a floor plan that's exactly the same as yours and that's what I've done here. So again we've put the beds on, we've got presumption the wardrobe might be here, it might be here, it might be a wardrobe here. So where do we put the lights? Now for me I'll ignore the bay and I'll look to put the light in the middle. Now the light in the middle of the sort of non-bay part of the room comes to there. Obviously that and that is equal. Um, as it's a bit off centre on the bed, I'm just going to move it to here so it's centred to the bed, so it's slightly further down in the room. So in the old days, the light would have gone here. Now they did that because they wanted to avoid a thing called silhouetting. If the light's over here and you're stood between the light and the curtains, your silhouette will get projected onto the curtains. Uh, these days we have thicker, better curtains, so that's not really an issue. So we put the light in a more useful space in the centre of the room, so it gives you better illumination. Now with this one, I'm going to have uh, a nice pendant in the middle, and that's kind of the ambient uh, light. And uh, for a bit of functionality lights, I'm going to have three spots kind of in the corridor, so it's nice and bright should you need it you know when you're dressing in wardrobes maybe you're working maybe you're all working from home at the minute your work desk might be there you might want a bit of brighter light so obviously we need light switches so we need a light switch by the door so one for the pendant one for the spotlights and then over here it'll be the same you need one for the spotlights one for the pendants one for the spotlights one for the pendant so we will have an intermediate switching system going on in this room. Then for the small bedroom, I'm just going to put it dead center. So I've just moved from corner to corner into the center. Uh, we definitely want a light switch by the door. If I want to get fancy, I could put a light switch there. But if I do that, I may be dictating too much where the bed might go. So on this occasion, because this room is quite small, I'll probably just leave that one off. Uh, then we need a hall light. We're going to have one there, if you see it. We're going to have kind of a fancy light above the stairs. This will be a spotlight here. And then we need a switch for the hall. It'll be there. And there'll be one sort of downstairs. So that'll be two ways to operate the hall light. And then the bathroom. Uh, actually, on my bathroom, the door opens inwards. I could put one there. I'm not that comfortable to having it that close to the bath. Uh, bathroom light switches are allowed in bathrooms if your consuming unit is to the current regulations. Uh, basically, if it's protected by an RCD, you can put a light switch in the bathroom. This occasion, though, I will probably put it on the outside because I say it water jets from the shower. My shower it will be at this end. If my shower is this end, I'd probably be comfortable having the light switch there, but because my shower is going to be at this end, because I want it away from the window, I'm not comfortable having my light switch inside the bathroom, so I will put it on the outside of the bathroom. But there you go, that's with the colour on. Now, I was originally just sort of sketched that there, but I thought, no, it wants to be in the centre there, so I've... Uh, shuffled it along a bit, uh, a little bit arbitrary distance from the door and this one is just centered between those two uh, the pendant lights over there. So the pendant switches, you see the orange switches, hallway, we're gonna have a sort of large pendant light there, spotlight there, and then the switches, one downstairs and one in the hallway. And the bathroom lights, as I mentioned, uh, we're going to have a light switch outside the door. Uh, 
the, here I'm going to have four spotlights. I've kind of put them equally spaced from the walls and sort of lavatory there. But they look a bit too, uh, I mean, this is the benefit of a skilled sketch. You can see, well, they look a bit too on top of each other. So when I actually get there in practice, I'll probably shuffle these along a bit. So that's, uh, I'll keep these distances, but these ones, I say, I'll maybe move close to the toilet and the sink and I'll, I'll work that out when I'm on site, see what, uh, what looks to be best. That's the lighting layout sorted out. And in the next video, we'll look at how to wire and connect all the light switches and lights together. So there you have it, it's a, there's a real world example of lighting design, it's, that will go into our current projects uh, and I hope you found that useful, see you on the next one, bye bye. Please don't forget to like, subscribe and comment, thanks, see you on the next one.